Hi everyone, this is Johnny O'Nose and I'm playing X3 Albion Prelude. And in this Let's Learn video, I'm going to teach you how to set up a commercial agent. Now, a commercial agent is all about providing your bases with the necessary resources it needs to be able to function. Now, you can automate the process of gathering these resources by setting up a commercial agent. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to need is you're going to need a freighter type. So this is a minstrel. Let's see, yeah, this is a minstrel. And uh, it's a pretty heavy, uh, heavy freighter, but it's also a little bit faster. So uh, I, I tend to use those as my uh, main fleet of uh, trading ships. So the first thing you have to do is pull up your properties, property own menu by hitting R and then cycle down to where your ship is at and then hit enter and then C to bring up the command console. You want to set the home base for the ship. This is the way it knows, you know, uh, what resources to buy, where to bring it back, and as well as getting the funds it needs to be able to purchase those resources. So let's go ahead and set the home base to the cattle ranch that uh, we, we built in the last episode. All right, that's all set up and ready to go. The ship is landed on the base. So it needs to be landed on the base for this to come up as well. If it's flying around, just, just order it to, to land. So uh, what I did was <laughs> select, the, select the ship with enter, hit C, to bring up the command console, and then you cycle down to trade. And you'll have a couple selections here. You have trader, sector trader, universal trader, and commercial representation. Now, the gear that you need for that to appear is the uh, the trade command software mark two trade command software mark three and the flight command mark one and two and uh, the navigation as well as a jump drive now you don't necessarily need a jump drive but as these guys level up and they level up as they do trades for you they'll eventually start using the jump drive to get to where they want to go but but in the beginning they'll, they'll fly straight but uh, eventually they'll be able to jump around. So it'll be uh, really quick to be able to get the resources that you need for each one of your bases. Okay, so now that we have the home base figured out and he's landed, we're gonna go ahead and put some money into the station. So here's our cattle ranch. And then we're gonna just put some money in there. Oh, credits. I put about 20 million in into each one of my stations. All right, so now that it has some money, we're going to go ahead and select the ship. And we're going to do is enter C and then trade again and go down to the commercial representation. So right here, you can see the basic, the basic selections that you can put for the trader. You can delete the accounting information. They, they continue to, to gather a log as they do trades so you can see how they're doing and whether or not they're doing what you want them to do. Uh, you want them to be able to take training so that they get better as well as learn the uh, learn the jump drive technology. You can then also pick of whether or not they are either taking money from you directly or from the station. I tend to like it pulling it from the station. That way you have a better idea of how the station's doing financially. And then agreement with colleagues. This is basically they work with other CAGs as, as well as the other traders to ensure that um, they're not doubling up on work. It's really nice. Then you have the ability to fire and then reassign. <clears throat> the wear list basically uh, restricts what resources from the base that the, um, the trader will deal with. So in this case, we'll probably only want him dealing with energy cells because he's just basically gonna be collecting energy cells so that the station can run. But if you wanted the if you wanted the CAG to also sell, you can have it for both. Or just leave it blank. It'll just take both. All right. You can also put a uh, blacklist. Or you can, you can say whether or not it's a blacklist or a trade list. So if you put trade list, this will... He will only deal with these two wares. If you have it as a blacklist then they won't deal with certain wares. So if you if you really didn't want your trader to, to actually sell the beef, then you can put back blacklist and then 
the beef here. Just like that. Let's take it off. All right, so we're going to put this as a trade list. And then the trade duties. This basically says whether or not your guy is either going to buy, sell, or both. So trader basically means both. Shopper means buy. And the salesman is selling the product that your station, your station produces. So your station settings, uh, this is, allows you to dictate how far the, the ships can go. So if you were to put this to 50, um, they'll go as far as they possibly can to go pick up the materials that they're trying to get. And then of course they have the home sector. And then uh, jump drive. So once they have the ability to use jump drive, uh, you can say how much energy that are they going to keep in their hold so that they can use a jump drive, as well as the minimum jump range. So if you have one jump being the minimum jump range, then they'll jump regardless of how close or how far they are to the destination that they're trying to get to. <clears throat> then you have an area for automatic naming, which allows you to kind of it will create a name for the ship so that it's all in line with the rest of them. And then you have your data storage. And this is really important that if, especially if you're going to be getting a lot of traders, which you will, and I'll show you how many I have right now. But um, this allows you to do all these settings once. And then when you're ready, you save it so that you don't have to do it again. So for instance, I'm going to load uh, by energy only. And that will set this CAG up for us. So all his trade information will be proper. So he's going to take training. He's, he's pulling money from the station. Um, the, the really important one here is the exceptions list. And this will restrict a ship from uh, traveling in certain areas, especially stuff like, uh, you know, pirates area. Uh, you've got the Terrans, which are we're at war, at war with right now as well as the Xenon sectors. You definitely don't want your ships flying through these sectors because they'll most probably get attacked or destroyed. So now that it's all set up because I had it all saved before, um, we can go ahead and get this going. So let's just check the wear list real quick. So it's on trade list and he's only buying energy cells. So then we're gonna go ahead and hit start commercial agent. And then we're going to see what he does. All right, here is here he is right here. And away he goes. So it looks like he is going to... He is flying over to Spacewood Drift. And he's going to go buy 3,200 energy cells. So let's go ahead and watch him as he travels. And you can do that by hitting R and then hitting the period sign to get him on the map. And then you can hit um, tab or whatever your default key is for your SATA drive. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and speed up time here so that you don't have to sit there and watch him go. All right, so he just picked up the wares that he needs to. So let's check to see how much he got. So you can select them, then hit U for info. Then you can scroll down to his cargo. So he has 9,930 energy cells. That's plenty for the station. So we're going to watch him uh, come back. All right, so our trader's back <clears throat> from his excursion to uh, pick up some energy cells. So let's go see how he did. You can tell right off the bat that the station itself has lost money. This is merely because of the fact that he went and bought the resources using the money that was given to the station itself. So once he lands and unloads, this should start, stop blinking. Speed it up just a tiny bit. 
and there we go. The energy energy cell stores are pretty much pretty much full, and now you see production happening. So the station is now running automatically, which uh, leaves you time to go shoot some xenon or pirates or whatever you feel the need to do. Now that you have everything, you know, automated in terms of resources, it's also good to take a look at what the prices are. So I'm selecting. Through my property own menu, you hit R, then select your station, hit enter, and then D. And uh, you'll now have the ability of, you know, charging maybe less for energy cells and selling your product for a little bit more. That way you're getting a little bit more uh, money from the... So you can see here too, as I increase and lower the price, you'll see that the number of jumps either goes up or down. So if I select really high, it says jumps none. Like there's no one in the whole galaxy that's going to pay this much for that product. But if I go down a little bit, it, so it's a kind of a cool way of figuring out like what your price should be at. So uh, eight jumps, I guess that's fine. So I can keep lowering this and it looks like I can go as low as I want for energy cells. That way I'm getting a pretty decent profit, which is what you see, um, I think right here. You're getting a 60, 60 credit profit per item that you sell. Let's see if that changes if I raise this. It does not, oh wait, yes it does. Okay, so actually what it's telling you is the total cost of one item. So if you look at that, it, we're basically making 64 profit off of each one. So there you go. That's how you kind of set up a base and have it automated so that you don't have to worry about it. It will just eventually make money. Um, you might want to throw like a couple ships around it so that it's protected in case there's an attack. But given that this is in a core system, Argon Prime, you have the local authorities here too. So there's plenty of uh, ships. You got Argon 1, and all sorts of ships that are protecting this area. But if you build your base in kind of a kind of out of the way area, then you will probably have to put defenders on it yourself. All right, so that was the commodity agent, which is basically your way of automating the resource gathering, as well as if you wanted to, you can actually have your um, your CAGs do the selling of your products too. Now I wouldn't suggest that for a low level CAG. You may want to wait till um, they've leveled up a bit so that they start using the jump drives. The cool thing is as they level up, they'll also do things like uh, they'll buy drones to protect themselves, they'll buy energy for their jump drives, and they'll be more versatile out there. If they get attacked, they'll jump away and they'll do other things as they level up. So definitely worth uh, trying to level up your CAGs as well as your traders as well as your, um, your, your internal commodities group too, which I'll make a video for as well. All right, folks, this is Johnny Ono's playing X3 Ab Ableon <laughs> Prelude. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Thank you.